Let me ask you a slightly different question. And so in terms of maybe opportunities for systems integrators in that market, what are some of the critical maybe like point, points? I think it's very clear that you need to be very versatile and adaptable. But do you see other integrators trying to enter those types of contracts and then fail for whatever reason? And I guess, what are the opportunities for integrators there? Hmm. That's a good question. I would say that I would, it's interesting because it depends on the structure of a startup or whatever, what their strategy is. Some startups like to hire a bunch of direct employees. Some will not want to do that and only have contractors. And so I would say that there, if there's a, a big effort going on, then maybe a bunch of contractors will be brought in and it can be not necessarily that you're in the Bay Area, but definitely understanding new technologies and keeping up with what the technologies are, which can be actually quite uh, a lot to do. That's probably how you would get in in there. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. And, and I guess to maybe expand on that last point of new technologies, right? So I think we talked about maybe the software best practices as like technologies, but what about like the industrial automation like, no, do they expect you to know like the latest features of let's call it like TIA Portal or Studio 5000 and the speeds of the drives? Or is it more on the traditional software that the expectations are placed or maybe all of it, right? So I'm curious how you think about upskilling, maybe not only yourself, but also the team and whoever's going to be working on uh, the project. Yeah, I would, that's a good question. I would say that like the need to understand like baseline core automation is very real, right? Because just understanding how to translate between different like industrial protocols, for example, <laughs> like I always, I was thinking about like an example of, I had to figure out if I could pull data from a mass spectrometer that was pulled from a lab onto a manufacturing line. And I've literally never touched a mass spectrometer before that. And thinking oh God, through, okay, is... <laughs> it's to analyze gases and stuff, like what the yes. materials are. But first of all, I had to think about how is this recording data? Where is it recording data? And I ended up just like having a laptop connected to it. And then it's just like sitting on a CSV file. Then I have to think about, okay, how do I get that data into the SCADA system? And where is that data going to live? And first, the first question went in my head was, how is this communicating at all? A lot of like <laughs> research type stuff is going to be RS-232 still in the serial connection. And that's not, there's, of course, there's like being used in industrial automation, but like we would think of it as typically re real time polling and over ethernet or something in like a continuous connection to a instrumentation. And so I feel like what's possible in industrial automation or typical in industrial automation versus test environments versus vehicle environments, like all of these things, those separations and the whys are a super important part of that still of like how it's typically set up in industrial automation, what signals to even expect of four to 20 milliamps and how you get that into a controller is definitely a need, you know?